Welcome to episode 37 of Run It Straight, where we answer your questions about how to get better at rugby league. We don't sidestep the difficult topics, but rather give direct answers to straight up questions. In essence, we run it straight. <laughs> Joining me today on episode 37 is going to be Coach Cal, who has been in the program for a while as a, uh, a player and then as a coach. Um, just give us a quick rundown of sort of your journey, if you will. Yeah, yeah sweet. So um, the way I came into the program, it was 2017. I'd recently got cut from Harold Matthews at Balmain. I had to get myself bigger, had to get myself stronger, had to get myself physically ready um, for the next season of SG Board to get my best foot forward. Um, Joe and the team here really helped me out get to that point of playing SG Ball a year young and then eventually my own age. Um, working my way through the ranks, I then eventually became a coach here and that was about 2019. And then last couple of years, you've been at the Roosters Cup squad? Yes, been at the Roosters New South Wales Cup uh, in 2022 and uh, 2023. Well, sorry, 2023, 2024. Um, and that's been really good. I've learned a lot and I'm trying to bring what I've learned on uh, in with the boys. So. It's been really fun. And I think a lot of the boys can relate with him really well because he has been from right from that start when he came in lifted for the first time with us all the way through to where he's on the gym floor teaching the boys now or we're down at the field and we, as we're going through skill stuff or even he's one of our, um, uh, our head coaches as far as our online stuff goes. So, um, yeah, pleased to have Cal with us uh, and we'll get him on a lot more with, the next, with a few of the next uh, few episodes. So let's get to our first question. What is the most important thing as a rugby league player to train? Is it fitness, ball play, or defense? Um, firstly, I would, this is very, very general. Well, firstly, I would say fitness, but more important to that is why would you ask that question? Um, it sounds to me like you're trying to rationalize only doing one of those three areas, which is usually when someone asks those questions, which is better, this or this, it's usually because they only want to do one of the three. Um, and I'd be asking, why is that? It's like. You know, it's like saying what's more important to the car, the tires, the steering wheel or the engine. Well, you need all three or it doesn't function as a car. And the same thing as a rugby league player, unless you're fit, unless you've got ball skills, um, unless you develop the ability to tackle, you're not really a rugby league player, uh, which kind of, I guess it leads to probably one of the biggest issues that we encounter all the time, which is people saying that they need to prioritize one over the other because they don't have enough of that special thing that we call time. Um, which, how often do we hear that? Yeah. Oh, common theme, common, common theme. theme with all the boys. Uh, so what we would say is check your phone right now and see how many hours you've spent, on, how many hours you've spent in the last 24 hours um, over the last day, over the last 10 days. Because if you look, most people have iPhones and it's usually got the one day option and then the 10 day option. Um, if you're spending more than two hours every day looking at, the food, uh, at your phone, then you have time. Stop wasting your life staring at the damn screen consuming other influences and other people's content and do something yourself. If you're spending more than two hours on your phone, you're wasting your life. Simple. Anything more that you want to... Wanna... Well, I'll even say this. We've got people that are spending eight hours. If you're spending eight hours on your phone, you're a complete loser and you're going to live a loser life. Choose to not be a loser like so many other people. Don't get addicted to it. Get off your phone and do something. Cal? Yep. Oh, well, hit the nail on the head. Um, as Joe said, if you're trying to pick one out of the three to really train, um, you're kind of trying to take a shortcut, um, honestly, <laughs> which, which a lot of boys in the program do do. Um, honestly, try find the time, make the time, prioritise rugby league and make all three of those things a priority. Fitness will trump everything. Fitness will make your ball work better. It'll make your defence better. That's why I said that. And look, that's why, like, let's say that you were doing an adequate amount of all of those three areas and there was like one to put a little bit more time on. Uh, we would say test your fitness, go and run a Bronco and see where you're sitting. If it's no good, then I would work on fitness because if your fitness is better, your skills more likely to be on point. Um, and defence, uh, uh, how did he phrase? Um, um, oh, he just said defence. Yeah. So defence, your technique is a skill. So it's a skill that you need to develop, but it's a skill that will be better when you are fresher and you'll be fresher when you're fitter. Um, uh, fitness, obviously, if you're fitter, you're fitter, so it makes that side of things easier. Ball play, again, is a skill which is going to be easier if you're fitter. You can make better decisions on the field. So it's not just about tackle tech, it's about getting your body in the right position, pushing across if you need to, covering your inside man, all of those kinds of things. You're going to be able to do that a lot better if you're fitter. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah? Nah, so just train all of them together. Train all of them together, don't look for the, um, the easy way out. Yeah. Next question, what do development clubs look for in a player? 
Um, well, the number one thing, which is a big thing, is height. Whether we agree with that that should be like the sole thing that they're working on, well, I think we, we've, we've had a lot of guys come through that have been really good footballers that have been strong and powerful and everything else like that, but unfortunately because they fall below a certain height, they, um, the systems just, they just put a line through them. We're not saying that we agree with that, but we're saying that that is a thing. Okay? But when they're looking for what they're looking for, they're looking for size. They're looking for strength and power. They're looking for speed. They're looking for X factor, effort on effort. They want to see punishing defense. They want to see footwork, you know, uh, hyper aggression that's used in a controlled manner. Every team needs to have a couple of guys that are enforcers that, you know, the other players are scared of. Those are the things that if you're at a, um, if you've got selectors or if you're at a rep trial, that's what they're looking for. So ideally, you're hoping you have one, if not more, of those things. Now, having one of those things isn't necessarily enough to make it. Um, some other things that can help you are basically your attitude, your work rate, your work off the ball, those kinds of things, you want to be adding that to one of those other components. But attitude, work rate, work off the ball, you're not going to make a rep site if that's all you have. No? No, that's, no. that's, that's it. Yeah, you've got to have one of those other things um, to be able to stand out. And look, you know, if... if you're in a trial, bleach your hair, wear brightly colored boots. Believe it or not, those things do make a difference because then you're like, you stand out, the selectors, oh, did you see the kid with the pink boots or the, the one with the orange hair or whatever it happens to be? Um, um, that's all the physical qualities. I'd like to throw in there if I can. Um, one thing a lot of coaches look for, especially in development squads, Harold Matthews and stuff like that, is being able and having a willingness to learn and being a coachable player. A lot of coaches, they hate know-it-alls. They hate thinking a player knows it all because it undermines the coach. So if you're getting selected at the, whether it's development, Jersey Flag, Harold Matthews, SG Ball, any of the levels, you want to make sure that you are coachable. You know, the last thing a coach wants in, in, in a team is a know-it-all. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing that I've found outside of the physical qualities yep, yep. Um, is having the right attitude and being willing to learn. Now you put it, let's say that the, that the two of us are competing for the same spot. You know, I'm in a particular side. And we've got a few, we've both got a few of those X factor things. But if Cal's got the really good attitude, you know, he's rocking up early, he's one of the last to leave, it's yes sir, no sir, he asks questions, he listens, and then you've got me and I'm being disruptive and everything else, and you know, so I sort of walk around as though I own the joint, the coach is going to pick him nine out of ten times. So 100% though, and that is completely within your control. Obviously, how tall you are is not within your control. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we covered that one pretty well. All right, moving on to the next question. Is it worth putting 100% effort into footy? What would I do if I don't make it? Uh, yes, it is worth it. If you don't make it, you can go on and you can crush life. Here at, at League Fit Academy, our focus is on helping young rugby league players realize their potential. And it's not, just about, it's not just about making someone bigger, stronger, faster, and more skillful. Do we do those things? Absolutely, and we do them better than anyone else. That includes the rep systems. But what's more important than building the body is building character. Why? Because you can have all the talent in the world, um, but none of it matters without the character to back it up. Because, you know, at the end of the day, character is not something that you're born with. You don't inherit it from your parents. Money can't buy it. And no amount of coaches, managers, or knowing the right people is going to make up for a lack of it. Character is building the qualities of hard work and discipline that's going to set you up for life outside of footy. So when the going gets tough in life, which it will for everyone at some point, you're able to handle it. Character is the most important thing when it comes to success, both in football and success in life. That's why you should go all in. That's what we teach all the boys that come in here, their parents ask questions. What if they don't make it? I say, what if they don't make it? Your kids just learned to get up at 5 a.m. every single day and work his ass off towards something. If he does that in anything else in life, he's gonna be successful. So what do I do if I don't make it? You take the character you've developed from having a shot at it, you put it into something else and you crush it. You go into, into work, into a career, into business, you do really well there. You take it into family life, you have your own kids, you be an absolutely awesome dad and, and a fantastic member of the community. That's what you do with it. Cal? Yeah, again, nail on the head. Um, we build top quality characters. We you know, instill discipline into them, accountability, responsibility, all these factors that you can get while playing rugby league if you have the time of your life, if you're giving it 100% of your effort. If you don't make it, you don't make it. You don't gonna waste those years of what you've done in rugby league. Nah, it, it's, it, it, that's the whole point in, yeah. in footy and in sport is to develop character during those younger years to, to learn how to win, to learn how to lose, to put work towards an effort and sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't. And it is probably the number one thing that we hear back from parents 
to us, and this is the thing that really is really rewarding, you know, and you think about it when it's in the middle of the winter and I'm going out to watch the boys and it's raining and it's cold. But then after the game when their parents, or during the game, the parents come up and say, Joe, I can't, I can't thank you enough. The difference in my son, the way he speaks to us, that his, his, his approach at school is different, his life at home, the way he's even with his siblings is different. Um, we can't say thank you enough to League Fit. That's the whole point why you have a, a, a crack at, at footy and you try and do everything in life you should try and do as well as you can be. We said it before um, earlier on by spending eight hours on your phone, you're a loser. If you're spending four, five, six, seven, eight hours pursuing something like this, you're the opposite of that. And that's what we would encourage. Exactly. Yeah, so. That's 100% right. Have a crack at it. All right, please. If you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube, is that what I'm supposed to say, Spice? If you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube, please subscribe, please follow us uh, YouTube, on Instagram. Please share it, tell your friends, please comment because commenting is good. Ask questions in the comments because we will answer the questions. We love to answer the questions. Um, even if you've, got, if you've got anything that you don't even want made public, send it um, on Instagram, direct messages. Uh, it's usually gonna be me that's answering that question. So yeah, anything that we can do to help you guys out, please let us know and we will see you in the next episode.